Anyway, so yeah, today I will be making my own Survivors of the Void Risk of Rain 2 all item tier lists. All of them. Like, all of them. All of them. The only ones I didn't do were 3D scraps and the uh, fuel array. I think that's it. If I'm just gonna check, uh, I think that's all I didn't get in. Yeah, item scrap. Yeah. No, I don't see one that I didn't take. Oh, and the artifact key. Of course. Doesn't matter, you know. This shit don't matter. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. Uh, we will start with all the white items, then go through the greens, the reds, the yellows, the blues. Uh, blues mixed in with the use item blues. All the use items and the aspects, and finish it off with the new void items. So, first things first. Let's start with... Lensmaker glasses. Now, Lensmaker glasses. Uh, here's my scale. That's the scale. So, godlike at the top. Amazing. Great. Good. For some characters, which means that some things are good for some people. Even great. But it might not be that good on other characters. For example, Engineer. Artificer. There you go. And also some melee items as well. And then you have Bad. Which is bad for everyone, basically, and awful for everyone. Which is basically F tier, you know? So if I would have to do it like S, A, B, C, D, E, F, you know? That's, that's just what it is. A, S, A, B, C, D, E, F. There you go. But I decided to go with other names. So, yeah. Oh, by the way, I did this on my own. All my own, but yeah. Well, didn't take too long. It took about two hours to make it. I should say an hour and a half at the top, but two hours, <laughs> pretty much. Alright, so, lens maker glasses. If you don't know, I always give a description of the item every time while we go through it, even if there is 170 items, something around that. 168, I think, exactly. So, lens maker glasses gives you a 10% chance of getting double, cr double damage. Crit chance. Basically, it's 10% crit chance, and if you get 10, you give yourself 100% crit. Uh, 101, since you have 1% innate crit, and uh, you also have three items that give you crit. Actually, I never really saw, looked at that. Does Shatter Sling give crit? This is a good time as any to watch it. It does. Okay. So, yeah, I was right about that. Good. So, yeah. You have 15%. There you go. So, you could have 116% with having uh, 10 lens maker glasses. However, this item it just goes here. Right, it just goes here. It's just gone. Like, there you go. So, lens maker glasses is a good, um, it's a good start for gone. Like, you know, I, I won't take it down to amazing. I will not. However, it's a good middle of the pack gone. Like, I won't say it is the best item in the game. No, because it doesn't stack infinitely or anything like that, except for one character, one new character. I'm talking about Railgunner, because normally, it, I did hear about the fact that all critical strike, yeah, all critical strike chance and converts into critical strike damage. 1% crit is 1% crit damage, which means that Railgunner actually scales infinitely with crit, which is a thing. Uh, and it's actually a pretty good thing as well, you know, it's, it's nice. So yeah, item, godlike. Even better for Sniper, for Railgunner. So, there you go. Gasoline. Gasoline. <clears throat> so, you kill an enemy, uh, when you, whenever you kill an enemy, it ignites all enemies within 12 meters plus 4 meter per stack, dealing 150 base damage. And you have a burn that deals 150 plus 75 percent extra per stack base damage. A burn. So, it stays for about... Four seconds. I don't know exactly how it works, the burn, but yeah. I think that this item is very good. Especially, so it's very, very good for some characters, and it's great for basically any character. Because gasoline 
alongside ukulele, Will O Wisp, these this Trinity of Item already, and let's say Unstable Tesla Coil, so this Quatuor of Item is really good for dealing with crowds. Really, really good. And the thing with gasoline is its range scaling is actually pretty fast and pretty good. So what I will give to it, also it has extra damage with the burn and also deals 150 base just like that. So if you're playing with glass, I always play with glass, so that's why I'm saying this. But if you play with glass, this item can insta-kill waves very easily. I think that this is a good one f between Amazing and Great. I think it's top bottom of Amazing. I think it's bottom of Amazing. Now, let's get to the Sticky Bomb. Uh, sticky Bomb. It's a 5% chance. Hyperbolic. No, it's linear. A uh, linear 5% chance. Okay, never mind. It's a 5% linear chance. So 5% plus 5% plus 5% on each stack. So if you have 20 Sticky Bombs, you get a bomb on every attack. It's a 5% chance to hit to attach an enemy to a bomb to an, a bomb to an enemy. The other way around wouldn't make sense. And this one doesn't have a damage scaling, but it does deal 180 total damage. Total means that it's actually extra damage compared to a base one. So there you go. Is the sticky bomb good? You could say it's good. I don't think it's great. I think it's good because its damage isn't that high. And I mean, it's white, so it makes sense. But this one, good, yeah, in the good tier, that's fine. Now, bundle of fireworks. You launch eight plus four per stack fireworks that deal 300 base damage. You might think that I will actually get this item a bit high on the list, but I will give it great. I will give it great for a reason that will become abundantly clear once we go to the reds. Then, back of magazine, you get another charge of your secondary skill. It is very good on some characters, and a bit useless on some others, mainly Railgunner, Engineer, <laughs> these two already. These two are the ones I think that benefit the, less, the least from back of magazine, especially Railgunner, because you don't get the extra 500%. Uh, from the reload, the perfect reload. So, I'll say for some characters. Because it's never really that amazing anyway, you know? So, I think it's a good one for some characters. Just going with that. Stun Grenade next. So, it's a 5% hyperbolic chance to stun, which means that it goes down every time. So, it's 5%, then 5% of 95%. Which means that every time you get one, you actually go down and down and down. So, you never get to 100% stun chance. However, of course, this item has, has its usage. Mainly against miniguns. And that's why, before I call this item, fuck miniguns. Because this is exactly what it is. F miniguns. There you go. However, it doesn't have that many usages other than that. Because it doesn't deal any damage. It's just there for the stun on these guys, and also, I guess, the Greater Wisps. So, I'll say bad, but a high bad. You know, it's a high D. High E, actually. It's a high E. So, there you go. I mean, these two, you know, they are kind of on the same level, realistically speaking, but there you go. Next is the Tri-Tip Blade. I think that's his name. Tri-Tip Dagger. Never mind. So, 10% chance, linear, to deal a bleed for 240% base damage. The bleed doesn't scale, however, it stacks. The bleed stacks. So you deal 240% base damage for one stack. If you get more stacks, basically with that, strike ch with that chance, if you have it 100, oh boy, is this item strong. I think that the tri-tip dagger is on amazing. I don't think it's godlike. However, it is very, very good. And if you play it on normal without glass, it is actually pretty godlike. But in fairness, I don't think it's like great for everyone. Basically, artificer. Yeah, I'm, I'm always thinking about the artificer because 
its burst damage. And you can also think now about Railgunner, actually. Yes, she does have an ability to actually use short range attacks, but it doesn't deal that much damage itself. So there you go. I'm gonna give it this placement. War Banner. War Banner is actually pretty okay, I will say. So, War Banner on leveling up or on starting a teleport event, you get a banner that that has a, a radius of 60 meter plus eight per stack. This is the important one, and it raises attack and movement speed by 30 percent. Now, it's not amazing by any sense of the imagination. It's not amazing. However, I do think it's good, at least good. I will get it bottom of good. I think that's fair, right? All right, next, focus energy. Uh, focus crystal, sorry. Uh, increase the damage to enemies within 13 meter by 20%. Linear damage increase. However, this is exactly the type of items that goes into the four some characters. So I think it's worse in the back of magazine in this list here of those items. But of course, if you're playing a melee like mercenary or loader, you're good with that, you know, 13 meters. That's exactly where you would want to be in. So there you go. That one is for this exact uh, situation. Then we now have tougher times. Uh, if you don't know, tougher times is not 15% plus 50% chance per, per, per stack. It's actually 14% uh, because it doesn't stack exactly at 15%. And if you want to have a good chance of dodge, unaffected by luck, you actually need 10 10 tougher times means that you have 60% dodge chance, which is really good. Now, for 90% dodge chance, which is very, very good, you need 60. <laughs> you need 60 of them. And you cannot get to 100% dodge chance. It's not doable because it is exponential, and that means that the curve goes like this, and then it does this. So it normalizes at the, at the end. I know I'm on the other other side. So it normalizes at the end. There you go. And it never goes to 100. It goes close. It goes really close. You can go very, very well to like 99.5 or something like that. So, yeah. But you need a lot of them, of course. You need a lot of them. But, yeah. It's still an amazing item. I think it's even godlike. And I will give it that rating of godlike. However, I do not think like it is the top of godlike. The item, the fact that just you can dodge attacks like this. Perfect. Medkit. Now, Medkit heals you after taking damage for f uh, after four seconds. After your last t t intake of damage, after four seconds, you get actually a pretty substantial heal. Uh, the heal itself, let me go check, is 20 plus an additional 5%, plus 5% per stack. Max health. 5% max health might not sound like a lot, but that 20 at the, at the beginning of the game is actually pretty good. And then, if you stack it pretty well, like, if you get just 10, you heal for 50% of your HP. Why would that be bad? So, I do think it has actually a good... Uh, it's pretty good. I'll get it like this, I think. It's... Like, if you think about glass and everything like that, all, all healing items basically suck. But, yeah, I think it's good for here. I think this is good. Middle of good, pretty much. It's going to be on the lower end of good, but it's still going to be on good. Next is the power elixir. And I will say that this item is pretty bad. If you take damage that gets you down below 25% of your health, you consume it, giving you back 75% of your max health. Okay, there you go. Is this awful? I don't think so. Is it bad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's like bottom of bad. Because stun grenade is top of bad, and power elixir should be the bottom of bad. There you go. Don't worry, there will be items in awful. Next is the personal shield generator. You get a shield that recharges after 8 seconds normally, I think. Um, for 8% of your max H. So, and it stacks, of course. The personal shield generator, what you have to think about the personal shield generator is that it takes off your one-shot protection. Every time, you just have to think about that. It takes off your one-shot protection. 
So, it's still 8% extra HP. And I don't really know what to think about it. I don't know if I can say that it's bad or good. So, what I'll do is give it the bottom of good. Bottom of good standing. It's still extra HP. So yeah, there you go. Repulsion armor plate. I will give a good case to this item being good, okay? Even great. So, repulsion armor plate. When you're playing with glass with 10% HP, this item is the item you need early game. There's two items you need early game. This is one of them. I will talk soon about the other one. But repulsion armor plate reduces the damage of all sources by five. The minimum damage that you can take is one. You cannot take under one, unfortunately, but one. This means that the wisps cannot kill you early game. And the wisps are the main causes of my deaths in glass early game. This item is a game saver for glass. Is it good for the rest without glass? It's not that noticeable. It's not that noticeable. In normal, without glass, it's not that great. But just because I always play in glass and everything, I won't give it great, but I'll give it a middle to top of good. Armor piercing rounds gives you 20% extra damage to bosses. I don't think this item is great. I don't think it's good. I think it's actually pretty bad. It's top of bad, but just 20% extra damage to things that, yeah, they do have a lot of HP, but will you really feel the 20% that much? That's always the problem I have with evaluating damage output, you know? 20% extra doesn't feel like much. So, I will keep it at my assumption and do it like this. It will be at the top of bad, alongside stun grenade, but it will not be in good. I don't think it actually goes over the threshold of good. It's still fine. Next. Next. Crowbar. Crowbar, if enemies are above 90% of their HP, you deal an extra 75% damage. Total damage, I think, as well. If I look at exactly... 75% damage, total damage, to enemies below, uh, above 90%. So you deal 75% extra per stack. This item is also another one that is very good for glass, and actually in the entire game as well. I think this item is solid. It's great. It's a very solid item. That's actually 75% whenever something's full HP. You feel it. You do feel it. So I'll get it here. I don't think it's as good as Bundle of Fireworks for an item that I will explain soon. Uh, but, yeah. Oddly shaped opal. For the first attack, you get a shield that uh, gives you 100 armor on the first attack. Scales by 100 each stack. This item is good. It's good. It's not more than that. Okay? It's not more than that. I think it's good. It's a solid item that actually does save your life in a number of occasions. I will give it a placement above personal shield, yeah? Above war banner? I don't think so. I'm going to do this. There you go. Now let's get to an interesting one. Rusted key. I will do the, play the ranking of rusted key without the bug. Okay, without it giving you red items 100% of the chance of the time. I will not do it without with the bug. I will think about it as an 80% chance of giving a red and 20% chance of give uh 80% chance of giving a green and 20% chance of giving a red. Is this item still very good? Yes. I love items that give you other items. And this one is probably the best of them. It, no, there is a variant for this one, but I don't think it's as good. It's almost as good, but I don't think it is quite as good. Rusted Key is amazing. I think it's bottom of amazing, but it's still amazing. And now the box is easy to find as well. So, yeah. 
Soldier Syringe gives you an extra 15% attack speed. Plus 15 per stack. Good. Good item. Uh, seriously, I don't have much more to say other than that. It's a good item. It's a solid item. It's even great because attack speed is very noticeable on basically everyone. Uh, even for Railgunner. You might not think so, but Railgunner benefits from attack speed a lot. Like, a lot. You don't think so, but it, she does. So, I'll do this. I think I'll do this. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, energy drink. 25% extra movement speed when you sprint. Knowing that I am a big boy sprinter. Oh yeah, I am. I love sprinting in the game. So, this is my favorite move speed item in the game. <laughs> I think that this is an amazing item, bottom of amazing, but amazing, or top of great, ah, uh, no, no, bottom of amazing, I I'll make a case for why it's bottom of amazing, roll of pennies, um, so this one is, gives you three gold whenever you get a hit, plus three per stack, and it scales over time, which means that every time you get hit, you get one eighth of a chest in gold, I don't think this item is good at all. I think this item sucks. I think it goes here. It's basically around middle to top of awful. But I think it is awful. I think it's pretty bad. <laughs> if you get hit as much as to get an, an extra chest of gold. Dude. Anyway, yeah. I don't think this item is good. Now, Delicate Watch on the other hand. 20% extra damage... As long as you don't fall below 25% of HP. This is a double-edged sword on a white item. As long as you don't fall below 25%, you deal more damage. If you fall below 25%, the item breaks. It breaks. You don't keep the item. And I think that this type of item should actually be a blue, no? But it's a, it's a white. So... For that fact alone, I think it's actually amazing. And also, the fact, you know, it scales with 20% extra damage each stack. Yes, that is what gives the armor-piercing rounds, and they're in bad, right? But the armor-piercing rounds are only on bosses. This is on every enemy. This is on every enemy. As long as you don't fall below 25% HP, which is pretty easy to keep-ish. As long as you have one or two healing items, it's pretty good to keep that normally. It's pretty easy. So, I think that Delicate Watch is unamazing. <laughs> yeah, that's a few amazing in a row, pretty much, here. But Or amazing and great in a row. But I think it's, like, over the Rusted Key? Yeah. And now we have the definition of a for some character's item. Bustling Fungus. Bustling Fungus gives you a uh, heal whenever you stay static that heals for a percentage of your HP. This is the item for Engineer. The item. And, uh, of course, this means that this item goes here. It's only for Engineer, but it is the quintessential for some character's item. This is why I created this session, this section, you know? This is exactly why. Because it goes perfectly in that for some characters list. Part of the list. Cautious Slug. Whenever you're out of combat, you heal for 3 HP per second extra. Which is fine and noticeable. However, I think it goes here. Still. I think it's still a pretty bad item. Yeah, the effect is noticeable whenever you are out of combat. But you have other things to heal you that are feeling much better. For example, Monster Tooth feels a bit better. Medkit feels better. And Leeching Seed also, Harvester Scythe. Basically, all the healing items feel better, except Lipton Daisy. But we'll talk about that soon. And, of course, Interstellar Death Plant. But again, we'll talk about that soon. Topaz Brooch. I have another... This is another one of my picks for a heart pick. The same as Repulsion Armor Plate. Topaz Bridge gives you 15 extra barrier health, so yellow health, uh, when killing an enemy. It degrades over time. Uh, however, 
when you're in glass, <laughs> and I'll talk about that again, when you are in glass, you lose that barrier at a very small rate because it's it goes down at always the same speed, if you didn't know. It always goes down at the same speed, no matter the HP you have. At, if, at, at full, of course, I mean. At full, the whenever you have 100 HP or 15 HP, the shielding will still go down at the same rate. So this means that if you have 100 HP and a shield of 100, and say it's the, the, the barrier lasts for 10 seconds. So in 10 seconds, you'll have that 100 depleted. But if you have 15 HP and a barrier of 15, in 10 seconds, you will still have that 15 be depleted. But just in 10 seconds, it's the same lapse of time. So for that reason, and the fact that for glass, it's very easy to keep that up, it goes here with the repulsion armor plate, just a bit worse than it. But it's that second quintessential item for glass to survive. Because it doubles your HP, basically. It doubles your HP in, in glass. Bison meat uh, increases your HP by 25 permanently. <clears throat> and 25 per sack, of course. It's fine. It's fine, right? I think it's it falls under the same category of as the armor-piercing rounds, kind of. But not really. Actually, now let's think about it. It's actually better than this, no? It's better than this. It's better than the, than the personal shield generator. Is it better than the Oli Shaped uh, Opal? It might be. I don't think so. Now I'll keep it like I'll keep it like this. I'll keep it like this. Paul's Goat Hoof. Is it still fourteen percent? I want to be sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. Increases all movement speed by fourteen percent plus fourteen per stack. So before this item was better than the Red Bull because it, it before it was. 20% move speed, but they reduced it to 14, and they gave, uh, actually, no, they didn't, they didn't actually got it down, because it's actually 14%, but 20.4 whenever you have a, whenever you're sprinting, because it's all move speed, so it counts also with the sprint, but what that means is that for a sprint, it actually goes up with that 14% extra, so it actually gives an extra 6.4%, which means that before... The first energy drink was better than the uh, than uh, one Paul's Goat Hoof. However, after three energy drink, you actually had less power than three Goat Hoofs. Now they changed it with giving energy drink a flat 25% per sack. Which means that it's better for sprinting. Slightly better for sprinting. However, I do think that these two are basically similar. So I'll give them the same rating. Both amazing at the top of the list like that. Monster Tooth. Monster Tooth, whenever you kill an enemy, you drop a uh, healing orb that heals for 8 plus 2% plus 2% per stack of maximum health. This is pretty good. I think it's actually better than Medkit. I'll make a case for it being just below the Sticky Bomb. There you go. I think it's just below the Sticky Bomb. I mean, in itself, whenever you're you're gaining a lot of enemies, okay, and you take more, you kill more enemies than you take damage. So this is my my um, thought process behind this. There we go. Last in the whites, we have the Maka. Seven percent extra move speed and attack speed per stack. I think this item is pretty good. It's solid. And it's an all-rounder. I like that. Because it upgrades both your attack speed and your move speed. So, this is nice. And I will give it the bottom of great. Bottom of great. There we go. And that's the whites done. If you want to have that list uh, taken in. There you go. The whites. Ta-da. The whites. Woo! There you go. White items done. Now, let's get to the green items. Thank you. Brave. Okay. The green items. First up, we start with everyone's favorite, the ATG Missile MK1. And, of course, so this item, 10% chance to fire a missile that deals 300 plus 300 per stack total damage. Ladies and gentlemen, this item is the bomb. 
And it's even more of the bomb since Survivors of the Void. And I'll talk about that when we get to the reds. But what this means for me is that this item shoots here. All the way. All the way up top. Is it going to last in first place? No. I can tell you that it won't. But it's going to be close. It's going to be top five, normally. A second in the greens. Will-O-Wisp. I love Will-O-Wisp. <laughs> it's the same item as Gasoline. Slightly worse, but with slightly more damage. Actually, when I say slightly, a lot more damage. <laughs> because Will-O-Wisp actually has damage that scales. So, on killing an enemy, you spawn a Lava Pillar in a 12 meter, same as Gasoline, but plus 2.4 meter per stack. Less than Gasoline. Gasoline was 4 meters, remember that. But it's in a radius of 12 meter for 260%. Already more base damage, plus 156 per stack. Weird, weird thing, but they could have just got 150, whatever. <laughs> no, it's weird to actually get the percentage on that, but pff, who cares? So yeah, this item is really good. <laughs> I think I prefer gasoline myself. I prefer gasoline. I'll do it like this. They are basically the same items, but... Gasoline with the burn effect and everything, I feel like is better. There you go. Gore's Tome is another one of those gold generating items. So whenever you kill an enemy, you have a small percent chance, very small percent chance, of uh, having the item drops you uh, a, a treasure that uh, is worth $25 that scales with time. Basically, it's uh, a full chest. You get a full small chest worth of gold whenever you have one of those artifacts. Is it good early game? Yeah, sure. It's pretty good early game. If you have one early and you get some of those artifacts that give you the gold, like if you don't have the money to open chests, sure, it can be good. Same for Roll of Pennies, actually, let's be honest. But it's limited to only that, and late game is just for the XP. It's just for the EXP, so you don't care about it too much. It's better than the Roll of Pennies, but I still feel like it's pretty much like between here and here. It's between the roll of pennies and the power elixir. And above the power elixir. As a green, it's pretty underwhelming. I'll give it like this. Infusion. Permanently increase your HP on kills by 1 at a maximum of 100. And it stacks, so um, whenever you have 2 infusion, every stack gives you 2 HP, and you can go up to 200%, 200 max HP, not 200%, 200 max HP. And it scales plus 100 every time, and plus 1 extra HP per stack, also that you get per enemy. So, what do I think of this item? I think it's great. I think it's great. I think it's above the mocha. I think it's above the crowbar. I think it's above the Soldier Strange. I do not think it's above the Bundle of Fireworks. Again, I'll explain my choice uh, whenever I get to it, the item that I want to. It's it's coming up soon. Uh, well, I mean, in two lines and then some. Berserker Spawndron next. Berserker Spawndron, whenever you kill four enemies, basically, I think, four enemies in a row at quick succession. Yeah, killing four enemies within one second sends you into a frenzy for six seconds plus four per stack. Plus four seconds per stack. It increases movement speed by 50% and attack speed by 100. This item is the bomb on Huntress. It is so good, it's crazy. It's also very good on multi. It's pretty good on commando. It's pretty good on mercenary. I also like the effect on mercenary. It's fine on the void character, the void fiend. And for the rest, engineer can also be good for it. And the rest is okay. It's never bad, except for Artificer. But Artificer is a special case. I think this item is like a top of good, bottom of great. Because 100% 100% attack speed for, for 6 seconds with 1 stack is pretty noticeable. You can really do a lot at 6 seconds in this game with extra attack speed. So it's between these two, I think. It might even be higher than that. Now that I think about it. It's better than Mocha. It's better than Mocha. Is it better than Crowbar? Mm, 
Nah, this is hard. I'll say no. I'll say no. Now I have to rethink about my placement of Sticky Bomb now. Um, Sticky Bomb. Let's think about this. Is Mocha better than Sticky Bomb? The rest is fine, I think. But is Sticky Bomb better than Mocha? Then better than Mocha. Let's uh, talk about this. I don't think so because it doesn't have damage scaling and this one just scales infinitely and this one has only a few. You can only stack 20 and then after that it becomes useless to stack it. So yeah, I'll keep it like that. Next up, Ukulele. 25% chance to fire lightning for 80% total damage on up to 3 plus 2 per stack targets within 20 meters plus 2 meters per stack. This item is good. This item is good. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. I think this item is another one of those quintessential great ones. Even maybe amazing. I think it's better than these two. Even maybe the Rusted Key. Yeah, I know it's better than Rusted Key. Is it better than the Delicate Watch? Ooh. For wave clearing and everything, I'll say yes. I'll, I'll get it as the other two. Just at the bottom of the of the of this trinity of items here. Yeah. Okay, that feels okay. Leeching Seed. On any hit to an enemy, you get an extra 1 HP healed. Plus 1 per stack, of course. So, this is better than this. Better than the Monster Tooth. Because at least this one doesn't require you to go walk on some things. Is it better than the, the Sticky Bomb? I don't think so. There we go. It's just another one of those good ones. And here comes Shuriken. So. Shuriken deals a lot of damage. Okay? It deals a lot of damage. If you have an immense number of stack of this item, it is really good. Really, really good. However, the one problem I have with this item is the fact that you have to aim. <laughs> now, that might sound weird, but what I mean by that is that it's something that fires with your auto attacks. You know, you throw a shuriken after activating your primary skill. You throw a shuriken that deals 400 plus 100 per stack. Base damage. Base damage as well, but that doesn't matter too much. You can hold up to 3 plus 1 per stack shurikens, which all reload over 10 seconds. So if you have, let's say, 5, shur five times the shuriken which means that you have seven shurikens at all time. You have one shuriken every 1.4 second, which is great, and they deal 900% uh, damage, right? Or 800, 400, 500, 600, well, wait, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 800, sorry. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, 800% damage, which is very, very noticeable and very good. And what you have to keep in mind is that this item also activates the bands. Runald and Kiaro. They active this item activates the bands. If you are able to aim it correctly and actually get the, the throw of the shuriken correctly, which is hard on people like Huntress, this is a good item. And basically for things like Railgunner, which force you to aim anyway, it's good. Oh I'm a bit conflicted. But, I think it's better than this. Because this one does scale and everything, so I think it's better than this. Oh boy, strap, strap in, because we've done like 20%. Next up, Warhorn. When you activate your equipment, you get 70% attack speed for 8 seconds plus 4 seconds per stack, which is nice. I like this item. Everything that revolves around attack speed is good for me because these items are basically the ones that matter for Huntress, which is my main. So, there you go. I do play the rest, okay? But finally, I got the achievements for Mercenary. Uh, I do miss the Prismatic Trial 1 because now Prismatic Trials are so freaking hard, man. But, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, I think Warhorn is uh, bottom of great. Now the bands. Kiaro first. Kiaro is the worst band. Uh, hits that deal more than 400% damage also blasts enemies 
with a runic flame tornado, dealing 300 plus 300 per stack total damage over time. Over time. Think about that every time, but yeah. Recharges over every 10 seconds. Before, the Kiaro band was supposed to be the better of the two bands, but now, since the anniversary update, I think? No, the one before that. Right. The one before the anniversary update. It's actually became worse. It actually became worse because of the fact that the tornado is very slow and doesn't move and is fucking bad. And uh, the damage scaling is different now and everything, so it's worse of an item, but it's still usable and it's still good. I think it's even still great. Um, here. Yeah, behind the Berserker's Pauldron. Now, Runald, on the other hand, <laughs> Runald's ban, hits that deal more than 400% damage. Also blasts enemies with a runic ice blast, slowing them for by 80% for 3 seconds plus 3 seconds per stack, and dealing 250% plus 250% per stack total damage. And he recharges over 10 seconds, just like every band. Except the new band, the Singularity band, which is actually 20 seconds. But, yeah. Runald is godlike. <laughs> it's a bottom of godlike, but it is godlike. Just for that damage scaling of 250 plus 250. Now, you might hear 250 plus 250, and it's every 10 seconds. This is the big thing. Every 10 seconds only, and you cannot reduce that cooldown. So, it will never be as good as the ATG missile. It's never going to be here. Why is it going to be here? Bottom of gold god like for this item. Next, Squid Polyp. When you activate anything, maybe be it a chest, a barrel, or the teleporter, or anything like that, you get a squid turret that deals a little bit of damage, scales in your, with your attack speed and your damage. But it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks, man. It's better than these two. What am I saying? No, it's not. <laughs> it's better than a roll of pennies. Yeah, it's not better than a Gorse Tome, though. When I have Gorse Tome, at least I'm like, okay, well, at least this one will be useful. Maybe. In giving me at least a bit of XP, but this one will not deal anything in the game. Next up, shipping request form. Yeah, shipping request form. A delivery containing two items, 79% chance of white, 20% chance of green, 1% chance of red, will appear in a random location on each stage, and they're free, and they're very easy to find. Now, note, on 10 of them, with 10 of this item, you have a 21% chance of having a common, 53% chance of having an uncommon, and 26% chance of having a legendary. This is a very, very high chance. Even on 5, you have a 12% chance of having a legendary, which is reds. This is big. Really, it's big. So, I think this item is actually really good. It's free as well. So, I think this item is really good. Where I will get it? Right under the rusted key. Actually, yeah. It's a rusted key that's easier to find, but gives you slightly worse rewards. However, this one scales the same way as the old rusted key. Yeah, there you go. So now you have two items that give you free items. Two of them. So yeah. Next up, Red Whip. If you're out of combat, you get 60% move speed. I think it's 60. Uh, I'm not sure anymore. 30, never mind. It's 30. 30% new speed. Let's be honest, I don't like this item. I don't, I don't like this item. Uh, but I can see some merit in it just to move out, move in the map quickly and everything. Fine. But I don't like it. I don't. I think it's pretty bad. And what I'll do is do this. Right uh, before the stun grenade again. Stun grenade is really the quint quintessential bad but top of bad item, I think. Maybe it's even good. Maybe I should just get it on bottom of good. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll do bottom of good. Bottom of good for per the, the stun grenade. Fine. Razor wire. Whenever you get hit, 
you burst, uh, you have a burst, you explode in the burst of razors, dealing 160% damage. Hits up to 5 plus 2 per stack targets in a 25 plus 10 meter per stack radius. This item is the bomb on glass. But it's really good on glass. If you have multiple, oh. Of course, you have to get hit without dying. That's the thing. But you have ways of staying alive now. With oddly shaped opal, the topaz brooch and everything like that. You have a pretty high chance of staying alive. I'll say, and even in the normal game, it still deals a good amount of damage. And the number of targets you can hit with it is really nice. I'll say it's just before the healing items, but better than the war banner. Or worse than the war banner. Worse than the war banner, actually. Like that. Wax Quail gives you, whenever you sprint, uh, if you jump while sprinting, uh, if you jump while sprinting, it boosts you forward by 10 meters, plus 10 meters per stack. This item is great if you stack it less than three times. <laughs> Don't go over three because your movement will be impossible to control after three. So, with that being said, I hope you understand, but this item is going here. <laughs> yeah. Next up, Predatory Instincts gives you 5% crit chance. Just base, not scaled. Careful, it's only on the first. Predatory Instinct only gives his 5% chance on the first. But Critical Strikes increase attack speed by 12% with a max cap of 36% plus 24 per stack. This means that every item you get plus 2 stacks, full stacks, max of this item. Predatory Instinct is pretty good, but it's understated it's 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 not an item that you will feel really that much in the game it's over underwhelming it's an underwhelming item however when you look into the, the the numbers the item's pretty good in itself it's pretty good actually but it's just that it's gonna be muffled behind other attack speed items once you get to 100 percent crit chance and this item can really get its full usage you will already have enough attack speed that the extra attack speed that this item provides will not be felt too much. So, I'll actually, yeah, now that I think about it, it's better for some characters than others. Basically, Huntress. It may just be this, actually. Or this, even. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's this. It is this. It's bottom for some characters. Regenerating Scrap. This is the new item that I kind of don't really understand why it's in green, but okay. If it was in white, it would be godlike. Really, really godlike. In green, though, it's a bit weirder. Because this is the item that is uh, first taken in the 3D uh, printers. If you have a 3D, uh, this item with a 3D printer, this is the item that will first be used in the 3D printer. Why? Because it regenerates at the end of each, at the beginning of each stage. So you will use the item, and then at the end of the stage, you will just get it back. But you will have gotten another item thanks to the 3D printer. However, of course, you can see that some items are better than others. But as long as you can find a 3D printer that you like in green, this item is good, right? But it's just finding that 3D printer. Sometimes that is very, very challenging. And so, I cannot give this item better than a bottom of good I'll do this just over the stun grenade but not over the ah, fuck no not even over the stun grenade ah, it's here it's here it's bottom of bad it's bottom of bad Hapu Feather though is godlike and I will explain Hapu Feather gives you an extra jump there you go plus one per stack plus one each stack mobility is the most important thing in this game Having those extra jumps is life-saving. On multiple occasions, I have been saved by having three or four jumps. And this is the lifesaver. This item doesn't just jump into godlike to me. It jumps here in godlike. Rose Buckler. When you sprint, you get 30 armor, I think. Let me look exactly. Yep, increase armor by 30 plus 30 per stack while sprinting. 
30 armor is around 17%, I'd say. I'd say, let me look. 30 armor is 23% damage reduction. Uh, 60 is around 36%. 38%, I'd say, even. 100 armor is 50% damage reduction. You know? 1,000 armor is 90% damage reduction. 91, even. But, yeah. So, there you go. It would take 330 rose bucklers to get a damage reduction of 99% while sprinting. This would amount to 9,900 armor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But there you go. Uh, Rose Buckler is not as bad as people say it is because I'm someone who loves sprinting. I always use sprint every time. Every time there's something going on, I will sprint. But what that means is that uh, this item is good, but not great or anything. I don't even think it's in good. Nah, it's probably in good. You know what? I'll actually get it with the Opal, just b below the Opal. And the bison steak. Yeah, there you go. Harvester Scythe. You get 5% crit chance on the first one. Not scaled. And then you get uh, 4 heal every crit. On your crits, you get 4, per four heal. 4 of heal. You know, 4 life steal or anything like that you'd want to say. Plus 4 per stack. It's an effect, again, that is pretty understated. You will not feel it too much. But sometimes it can be felt and it actually feels really good. Especially with a certain red item. We'll get to that. So, to me, this is an item that goes actually above the medkit, above the uh, topaz brooch, above the repulsor armor plate, above the monster tooth, above the leeching seed. Yeah, because 100% crit chance is not hard to get. So, yeah, you'll feel this heal more than this one, because this one is four times as high as this one. So, there you go. Old Guillotine. You reduce the HP from Elite by 13%, plus 13% per stack. Hyperbolic. Which means that the curve goes like this. It normalizes at the end. It will go fast, and then normalize slowly. You know? You will never get to 100%. Before, this item was 20% reduced HP, then they took it down to 13, unfortunate. The item was really OP, though. Uh, I think it's still really good. A really good item. How good? I think it's that good. Uh... Yeah, I think it's that good. <laughs> I think it's that good. It's over gasoline and everything, yeah. Redu reducing the HP is a very nice concept and something... That, uh, yeah, you kind of need sometimes. Old War Stealth Kit. <laughs> Falling below 25% HP causes you to gain 40% move speed and invisibility for 5 seconds. You know where this item goes. There you go. Uh, seriously, I hate this item. Next up is the Fuel Cell. Fuel Cell gives you an additional equipment charge. So the use item. Plus one per stack, of course. So you get an additional one plus one per stack. And it reduces the equipment cooldown by 15% plus 15 per stack. This item, if you have a great uh, equipment, is great. But you have to find that great equipment. So. Mm, bottom of great. Bottom of great. Lepton Daisy. Uh, on one occasion, plus one per, uh, per item. On the teleporter event, you get a 50% heal explosion, uh, which is nice, but it's so erratic. It's not something that you can really use, so I think it's here. <laughs> or it may just be the same as the power elixir, because it's basically the same concept in a way. It's on certain occasions where, yeah, you'll get a big heal. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. There you go. I'll do this. So it's bad. I won't say it's awful, sure. Hunters are a poon. When you kill an enemy, you get 125% movement speed, fading over one second plus 0.5 per stack. 
this is big. This is a very big movement speed boost, but it's so ephemeral that it doesn't really stay for long. That's what ephemeral means. I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> mm, so it will not be with the other items here. But at the same time, it's not as bad as the Red Whip. Because the effect is ephemeral and you feel it. It's pretty nice. I think it's actually an item that falls under, under the For Some Characters category. It's basically in the same category of item as the Predatory Instinct for me. Just better. I'll do this. I'll do this. It's the middle of for some characters. It's one item that you can get if you are basically on Huntress or uh, Void, uh, the, the Void Fiend. On Multi as well. That would be very nice. Uh, extra move speed is always nice for Multi. And at, at that much move speed is very nice. Next, Ignition Tank. Your... Ignite effects deal 300% plus 300% per stack more damage over time. So Ignite insta instead inflicts stronger burn. So, yeah. Artificer. Of course, this item is massive on her. That's for sure. Aside from skills, Ignite can be inflicted... Okay, Ignite can be inflicted with Gasoline, the Molten Pour of Perforator, and the Molotov Six-Pack. That's the only items. So, in itself, it's uh, an item that is just better for your... Uh, <laughs> it's an item that's uh, better for Gasoline. It makes your Gasoline three times as better, as good. Three times as good. And then six times as good and everything, but... In itself, for Artificer, it is godlike, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> so it's godlike for Artificer. Damn. Because tripling the burn on Artificer? That's massive. I, I had completely forgot about Artificer's uh, flamethrower. Yeah, that it gives the burn. Uh, you know what? This is actually just going to be top of for some characters, I feel. Yeah. Even if it's good for everyone, though. It's good for everyone. So, no, it's good for everyone. So, I should get it, like, here? Yeah, here. Between the Sticky Bomb and the Shuriken. Fine. Deathmark. If you have four effects, uh, debuffs, mar the enemies are marked for death, increasing damage taken by 50% from all sources for 7 seconds, plus 7 per stack. So, basically... If you have four debuffs, which now are pretty easy to get, you actually deal extra 50% damage. This item is going to be in great. I can already tell you that, but where in great? It's better than crowbar. Yeah, it's better than crowbar. Uh, I'm struggling getting it over the syringe, though. I won't. I won't get it over the syringe. Chrono Bobble. Next, uh, so Chrono Bubble slows the enemy by 80%, I think. Is it 80? 60% for 2 seconds plus 2 seconds per stack. This item's a gimmick, and I don't like it. Uh, it's just here, right? I think it's just here, in bad. In medium, in middle of the pack, bad. Bandolier, 18% plus uh, 10 I think it's not linear, by the way. Oh, no, it's special. The hell does that mean? Ah, okay. It's 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus amount to the power of 033. Which means that 1 is actually not 18%, but 20%. Okay. And the second one is a full 10. But after that, at 10 stacks, you have a 54% chance. Which is more than enough. You don't need more than that. So it's a chance to give you a packet that resets your skill cooldown, which is fine. But again, when are you going to just spam all your cooldowns anyway? Like when you get, if you get one, that's great and all, but I don't feel like that item is that amazing. It should be like here. And we get to the reds, baby, and we start with a very strong red. 
The 57 Leaf Clover. All random effects are rolled plus one, plus one per sec, times for a favorable outcome. What this means is, let's take the example of the ATG Missile MK1. Your ATG Missile MK1 has a 10% chance of activating. However, with the 57 Leaf Clover, it'll take the 10% chance, and if you actually don't get the 10% chance, it will roll the effect again to see if it will get it or not. So what you end up with is not 10%, but 19% chance of having the effect, because it's 10% plus 10% of 90% of the failing. So it, this is all probabilities, if you have done any maths on that. Oh, I hate prob. I, I actually no, I don't. I love probs. Now that I think about it, probabilities are like the best thing in maths, in my opinion. I love them. Actually, eh. Actually, something better. One thing better. That thing is matrices. Anyway, uh. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but the fifty-seven leaf lower is completely godlike. Because this is not just for the the uh, HEG missile. It rolls everything except the tougher times. Because it's ex explicitly told that it doesn't affect the uh, tougher time. But everything is in. Everything. Even the lens maker glasses. <laughs> the stun grenade chance to stun. The tri-tip dagger chance to bleed. The ukulele chance to, to fire lightning. Which is very good, by the way, because it's already 25% chance, and then you get 75% of 25. Well, 25 of 75. So, that's very good. You have the sticky bomb chance to attach a sticky uh, sticky bomb. The missile. The bandolier chance to drop an ammo packet. The gorse tome chance of dropping gold nuggets. The sentient meat hook. The happiest mass. The molten and charged perforators. Everything is just so good. Oh, and Spinal Tonic, chance to get a Tonic Affliction. A single Clover reduces the chance from 20% of having a Tonic Affliction to 4%. <laughs> so, yeah. And also Monster Log Drop Chance, apparently. This item is the second best item in the game. Ooh. Okay. And Kuana's Opinion is the second that we have. Store 100% plus 100% per stack of healing as soul energy. After that soul energy reaches 10% of your maximum health, you fire a skull that deals 250% of your soul energy as damage. So, I'll give you an explanation of exactly what that means. You store your healing. So, let's say you heal, you have 100 HP and you heal for 5. So, you'd store that 5. Then, if you get to 10 HP that you actually healed, you will fire a skull that will deal 250% of that 10. So, 25. This is why this item sucks in glass. You see why I mean? This item sucks in glass. It's good in other situations, though. It's actually good. And it's an item that is also quite essential on on uh, engineer to have a good time in melee range for your turrets. I feel. So yeah, and Kuana, not as bad as people think it is. It's 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 good. I won't say it's anything massive. I'll say it falls just below all the heal items like that. Yeah, alien head. Alien Head reduces all your skill cooldowns by 25% plus 25 per skill. Exponential, of course. Which means that the curve goes like this. The more you have, the less you will get in cooldown reduction. Makes sense. It's the same thing as for Leaf Clover, but the other way around, basically. So, Alien Head is fine. <laughs> I don't think it's amazing. It's fine. I think it's like a top of good, but it's not higher. Maybe great, but that's the, the, the maximum I'll give it. Just the bottom of great. Alright, bottom of great. And now we get to one of the new items. And this item is the best. I love this item. Pocket ICBM. 
all missile items and equipment fire an additional two missiles. It increases the missile damage by 0% plus 50% per stack. If you have two, you have your two extra rockets that deal 50 per your three rockets that deal 50% extra damage. Which is so good. But already, just in itself, having two extra rockets is massive. It's such a good item. You have one ATG missile or the disposable missile launcher or bundle of fireworks. This is why bundle of fireworks is that high in my rankings, by the way. If you have one pocket ICBM, these items are deadly. Even more than they usually are, which is very deadly. And so this item goes here. In godlike. Yeah, I'm not scared to do it. It goes in godlike. Next up, unstable Tesla coil. A fire out lightning that hits 3 plus 2 per stack enemies for 200% base damage every 0.5 seconds. It switches off every 10 seconds and all back on every 10 seconds, blah blah blah. So, the 200% base damage is a bit not showing whatever the item does because it feels low, but it's not low. <laughs> oh no, it's not low. It's actually a very good item. <laughs> the unstable Tesla coin is a pretty good item. Especially on glass, of course, but every item is good on glass, so it doesn't count. But, yeah. The damage that it deals, the little recoil that it deals as well, the fact that it hits multiple targets and everything, this item's okay. This item's okay. I'll give it a great. Over to Kiaro, yes. Over to Crowbar, even yes. Deathmark, yeah. Soldier Syringe, maybe. Oh, it's actually better than this too. Yeah, okay, it's here. It's here. <laughs> I was barely in grade, but now I'm at the top of grade. I know, it's fine. Uh, spare drone parts. You gain Colonel Drone Man, and your drones gain 50% plus 50% 50, 50 per stack attack speed and cooldown reduction. Drones also gain 10% chance to fire a missile, pocket ICBM, on hit, dealing 300% total damage. But with pocket ICBM, that would be triple missile, that deals 300% total damage. Drones gain an automatic chain gun that deals 6 times 100% damage, bouncing to 2 enemies. If you are a fan of drones, this is the item for you, man. This thing gives you so much for drones. It's crazy. And think about that with the prototype. With the prototype TC280. Oh boy, it's good. Yeah, because the main problem with it is that it goes a bit ape shit everywhere, but like having missiles and everything? Mm. I don't know. I feel like it's pretty good. And I will get, give it a good. I won't go higher than that. I'll give it a good. Uh, Below the healing items or above the healing items? I'll say below just to... uh Over War Banner though. Sentient Me Hook is really good. It's a 20% chance, plus 20 per stack, to, uh, to fire homing hooks at up to 10, plus 5 per stack enemies for 100% total damage. Again, the 100% total damage doesn't actually show the damage that this item deals, because it's very high. Because it is total damage. So you, ha you always have to think about the total part of it. And so, I think that this item is also another great one. Actually, no, it's amazing. It's even an amazing, yeah. It's over these. It's over the watch. It's under these three, though. Yeah, it's under these three. So, there. Rejuvenation Rack doubles your healing. Plus 100% per stack. <laughs> you heal 100% plus 100% more every stack. So, doubles and triples and quadruples and everything like that. You know it. Good item. <laughs> Rejuvenation Rack is a good item. I'll say, though, that it is for some characters. Basically, what I think is this item plus uh, Bustling Fungus for Engineer is a massive combo. So, I'll do this. Interesting on Death Plant. On killing an enemy, you plant a fruit that grows into a plant after five seconds. 
That plant heals for 5% of maximum health every 0.5 seconds to all enemies within 10 meters. This item is bottom of the barrel. It's shit. I hate it. <laughs> Interstellar, this plant is shit. I still don't know why they, could have gave, they gave it back in the game. It was in Risk of Rain 1, and it was already shit. And now they gave it back in Risk of Rain 2, at the same level, in red again. I understand why it's a red. In... In fairness, it should have been a very strong item, and the numbers are strong. 5% of the healing, of max healing, is good. But who stands around? Just who sits still in the game for the heal to be good? If the effect was that after 5 seconds, you get a 5% a max health heal for like 5 seconds or even 2 seconds on you without having to stand around that'd be good i wouldn't have to say anything about that basically a moving bustling fungus we'll get to that <laughs> we'll get to that but yeah interesting that's plant basically is the bottom it is the worst item in the game Hardlight Afterburner gives you two extra utility skills plus two per stack and it reduces your utility skill cooldown by 33 percent without Stacking, unfortunately, uh, it's fine. You don't need more than that, to be honest. If you play, if you can make this alongside an alien head, that's pretty good already. Okay, you don't need more. But a hard light after a hard light after burner is another one of those for some character items. If you think about engineer for the shield again, if you think about the dashes of huntress, if you think about uh, the dash of also void fiend, that I actually kind of like for that. Uh, it's pretty good, but if you think about the mine, the pro the proximity thing that uh, that uh, railgunner throws that then propulses you out, I don't think you need more than the two that is already given to you, right? I don't think you need more than the two that is already given. Same thing. Do you need more dashes for mercenary? <laughs> I'll give you an item that is very good for mercenary later, but this is another one of those for some characters. There you go. Bottled chaos. Trigger random equipment effect 1 plus 1 per stack times. So if you have uh, this item once and use your, your equipment, you will have another equipment effect at the same time. If you have two of this, you will have two equipment effects at the same time. Yada yada. <laughs> also, there's an item... Oh no, it's here. I'm, I'm an idiot. I was thinking there's an item missing, but no, it's not. I think that this item is pretty bad, actually. Bottle of Chaos. I think it's actually very bad. I think it's awful. <laughs> I won't say awful, but I say bad. Like, it's below Chrono Bobble, but no, below this too. Yeah, it's here. Ben's Raincoat. Uh, you become immune to all effects. Basically, Void Effect cannot hit you. Corruption cannot hit you. Uh, fire cannot hit you. You cannot get ignited. And this combo... I'm just thinking about this, but doesn't that work with Hellfire and Tincture? Oh. Elemental Rings cooldown, Singularity Bank cooldown, Safer Spaces cooldown, and Void Fog. Fortunately, are not prevented by Ben's Raincoat. <clears throat> but, uh, doesn't say anything about the Hellfire Tincture. So does it work? <laughs> I want to make sure. I want to make sure about that first, okay? Uh, Hellfire Tincture, Hellfire Tincture, Hellfire Tincture, it's right here. Uh... Mm. Does it say anything about it? It doesn't say anything about the... Hmm. Okay, well, uh, it doesn't say it. I'll assume it does take it away. So, yeah, because you ignite yourself, right? Yeah, burning. So I'd say... I'd say this is pretty good. Also, it gives you 100 extra HP, uh, plus 100 per snack, which is always nice to have uh, on an extra, as an extra. And I think it basically means that it's just this better. It's infusion, but better, right? It does everything that it does, but better. Uh, yeah. 
there you go. So let me just go back to the reds. There we go. Aegis. This was the item I was talking about when I was talking about uh, one of them. I don't remember which one. Uh, which one was it? I think it was, yeah, it was Harvester Scythe. When I was talking about Harvester Scythe and this item actually having some merit with it. Aegis is the one I'm talking about. Healing Past Full grants you a temporary barrier for 50% 50, 50 plus 50% 50 per sec of the amount you healed. So if you heal 6, you'll get 3 of the barrier. But the main thing about this is that this effect stacks on really quick. Uh, if you can stand still for some bustling fungus effects, you can get to full HP with like 3 bustling funguses. With the full barrier, that's what I mean. And if you have, like one of my friends had at one point here in the update in the simulacrum, if you have 25 bustling fungus, your turrets will have to get one shot to die <laughs> as engineer. So yeah. Uh, uh, other way, like, I mean, the turrets probably have like 5,000 to 6,000 HP. But Aegis in itself is a pretty fine item just for the fact that, yeah, it's extra barrier. And I like barriers. <laughs> it's the same barrier as Topaz. So it should be just about there, you know? It should be about there. It's not amazing, okay? And here comes the main point of dissension that you will have with me, and I know it. Dio's best friend is an amazing item. Upon death, this item will be consumed and you will return to life with three seconds of invulnerability. The three seconds of invulnerability don't matter much. The thing that matters is you will return to life. This is the main part I'm interested with this item. And I don't know why more people are not talking about this. No one is talking about the fact that this item revives you. And they are like, oh, this, uh, this is not good. How? How is reviving you not good? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. So yeah, for me, this item is amazing. <laughs> Getting a second life? I don't know, man, that feels really good to me. And I think it goes here. Between Delicate Watch and uh, Rusted and the shipment, shipping request form. Ceremonial Dagger. You fire three homing daggers on kill of an enemy that deal 150% base damage plus 150 per stack. I, I think that this is... I want to say amazing, but no, it's not. It's not. Don't think with glass. Don't think only with glass. With glass, it's fucking massive, but don't think only with glass. <laughs> I'll go bottom of great, like here, around there, yeah. The two of the cooldown reduction arc goes here, and this one is just above that. Then we get to another bad item. Uh, Happiest Mask. Killing enemies has a 7% chance to, kill, to spawn a ghost. Of the killed enemy within one with uh, one thousand five hundred percent damage, which is high. The chance to spawn a ghost is only seven percent. Can be upped with the uh, fifty-seven leaf clover, basically giving you seven per plus. Uh, well, seven of ninety-three, which is about what six point six point five, six point four. Around that. So yeah, uh, an extra, like, f almost 15% chance to get uh, a, a ghost. But it doesn't matter much. I don't think this item is amazing or anything. Is it good? Sure. You gotta be careful about lags, though. So what I'll say is, like, here. Wake of Vultures. And now we get to the weird ones that I don't like. Wake of Vultures. Gain the power of any kill delete monster for 8 seconds plus 5 seconds per stack. Yeah, in itself, the item is not bad, is it? If you get the effect of the burn, you know, that's pretty good. If you get the effect of lightning, that's also pretty good, right? And then you fall into the slow one, and you're like, oh, that's underwhelming. If you fall into the heal one, oh, that's underwhelming. If you fall into the malachite one, they don't heal. What? Why do I care? They don't heal. <laughs> yeah, now there's there is a mob that heals. Oh, boy. Does it matter? Does this guy matter? Really? <laughs> but anyway. And uh, yeah, basically, I don't think this item is as good as a uh, as it entails. Cause yeah, oh my god, you become an elite. Ho, 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 elite. That's not that good. I'll get it here. Bottom of bad. Uh, top of bad. Sorry. Frozen relic. 
Here we go. Frost Relic. Killing an enemy surrounds you with an ice storm that deals 1,200% damage per second and slows enemies by 80% for 1.5 seconds. The storm grows with every kill, and increasing its radius by 2, ma two meters stacks up to 18 meters plus 12 meter per stack. I hate this item. Just for a bad reason, but I hate this item. So, first of all, I think it's actually for some characters only. Second, the the the, the, the zoom out sucks. I hate that. I hate the change of FOV. So, yeah. Of course, I'll get in some characters because it's another one good for melees, but... Ugh. Head Stomp. Increase jump height. Uh, also, you cannot actually get any fall damage. Creates a 5 to 100 meter radius kinetic explosion on hitting the ground, dealing 1,000 to one uh, to 10,000 percent base damage that scales up with fall distance. Recharge in 10 seconds, minus 50 percent per stack. God, the jump height is a bit weird. Okay, you get give me this item without the increase in jump height, you got yourself a baller item. Okay, the item is amazing, but the increase in jump height is a bit weird. <laughs> Uh, I still think it's good. I still think it's good. It's basically head stomp of the first game, but refined. <laughs> Much refined. Because head stomp in the first game, you just stood still, and you fall down, and BOOM! Here, though, you just... You gotta use E, at least. You gotta press E. <laughs> but, for that reason, I still think that this is a good item. Uh, it's a bit limited in its purpose, I guess. I'll split in the middle of all the healing items now. All right, defensive microbots counts as an item, as a red item. This is the item of Captain, but it counts. Shoot down one plus one per stack projectiles within 20 meters every 0.5 seconds. Recharge rate scales with attack speed. I think this is a very good defensive item, and that Captain has it good. <laughs> he has a good time with that. <laughs> Lucky, that's what I mean. So, with that being said... Uh, it just goes here. Because <laughs> it's just for him. <laughs> it's just for him. So yeah. Now we get to brain stalks. <sighs> the screen tinter, as I like to call it. Upon killing an elite monster, enter a frenzy for 4 seconds where skills have 0.5 second cooldown. All of your skills have 0.5 second cooldown. So basically, no cooldowns on, on uh, your... Uh, on your abilities for 4 seconds, plus 4 per stack. But the main problem with this item is the fact that it tints, tints your screen purple. And I hate that. <laughs> I really do. I really do hate that. And so... There. Now, we get to a new one. We get to the Symbiotic Scorpion. On every hit, you reduce armor by 2 permanently on enemies. This item is amazing. <laughs> I really like this item. Although, you could argue that 2 is not enough. But once you get to 2 of these, my god, the amount of armor that you reduce. Bueno. That's really good. It's really good. Reducing 4 armor per stack. Imagine. 5 stacks minus 20 armor. <laughs> minus 20 armor means that the enemy takes an extra 17% damage. If the guy is like on minus 100, minus 100 armor means that he'd take 1.5 extra damage. No? Just me? <laughs> Other than that, after 100, is it actually that good? Well, it does scale down, unfortunately, so, eh. Is it a good item? Yeah. Is it a great item? Yeah. Is it an amazing item? Maybe. Maybe bottom of amazing, like here. That's what I'm thinking. So, yeah. Next up, Soulbound Catalyst. On killing an enemy, you reduce the equipment cooldown by 4 seconds plus 2 sec seconds per sec. And this one is completely dependent on your equipment. If you have a great equipment, Good for you. This item is amazing, then. If you have a bad equipment, well, find a good equipment. And then this item becomes amazing. <laughs> nah, I like this item. I really do. And I will get it... Doesn't have as many uses as this, though. Actually, with Crowbar, this one this one can be a good combo. So, there you go. 
Next, Shattering Justice. After hitting an enemy five times, you reduce their armor by 60 for 8 seconds. This is Symbiotic Scorpion, but better. Slightly better. And what I'll do is just here. Actually, no, here. Yeah, above the... Nah, below the Sentry Mihawk. Just below. Next up, Resonance Disc. Killing four enemies in seven seconds charges the Resonance Disc. The disc launches itself towards an enemy, towards a target, for 300% base damage, plus 300 per sec. Piercing all enemies it doesn't kill, and then explodes for 1,000% base damage, plus 1,000 per sec. Returns to the user, striking all enemies along the way for 300% base damage, plus 300 per sec. So basically, Resonance Disc is a freeze bee that comes back to you dealing more and more damage. On the explosion, it deals a shit ton of damage. This item is the bomb. It's really good. It's great. Amazing. Amazing, I think. It falls here. Ah, uh, no, it actually falls here. Here? Bold. I'm gonna go here. Because the fact that it hits everything along its path as well, that's what I like about it. Next up, laser scope. Laser scopes uh, increase your critical strike's damage by 100%, plus 100 per stack. This item is the item I've been waiting for. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard me say that in Risk of Rain 2, what I wanted was an item that increased your critical strike damage. Alongside increasing your critical strike damage on an item, we also have a character that is completely based on critical strike damage as well. So I am very happy with this item being here. Is it amazing? In actuality, yeah. It's godlike. It goes here. <laughs> it goes here. Like, seriously. Increasing your damage by 100%. Basically. So why wouldn't you get that? There you go. And last. Brilliant behemoth. All your attacks explode in a 4 meter radius for a bonus 60% total damage to nearby enemies and the enemies you hit, uh, the enemy you hit as well. Plus 2.5 meter per, for the radius per stack. The radius itself doesn't matter too much, but the extra 60%. Oh boy, yeah it does. Oh yeah it does. This item goes here. <laughs> this item's a top 3. For now, a top 3. Now... We still have a lot to do right now, but uh, we have done pretty much half of it. We've done 28 plus uh, 31 minus 1 plus 30, so minus 3. You just do that, minus 3, and you have the number of items that I've done for now. <clears throat> Next, boss items. Charge Perforator. A 10% chance on hit to down a lightning strike, dealing 500% plus 500 per stack damage. This item is great. This item is great. It deals a shit ton of damage. It's great. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have much else to say. It's great. And uh, I do think that it has a lot of merit in... Uh, you have a lot of merit in getting this item. Oh, okay, never mind. I was just looking at Genesis Loop, my bad. But yeah, okay, Charge Perforator is a great item. It's a bit, uh, like, the problem with it is just the, that the lightning strike sometimes don't hit the target that you want it to. But it's still an amazing item. I still think it falls over these two. Yeah. Next up, Defense Nucleus. Killing enemy monsters, uh, elite monsters, spawns an alpha construct limited to four. Alpha constructs are not amazing anyway as a as a, a mob, so I'll just say that this one is a bad one. Not an amazingly bad one, but around here. Next up, Empathy Cores. Every 30 seconds, summon two Solus Probes that gain 100% plus 100% per stack damage per ally on your team. So the more you get people in your team, the better this item is, but it still will never be that great. And so, to me, this item falls again with the same one as this. Next up, Genesis Loop. Falling below 25% health causes you to explode, dealing 6,000% base damage. Recharges every 30 seconds, divided by 2, plus 1 per stack seconds. So, 
<laughs> what this means, so basically, for me, minus 50% per stack. That doesn't mean anything. That's not how it works. Yeah, okay, there you go. So how it works is, as I say, so as you, when you have one of them, you do 30 seconds divided by two. If you have uh, two of them, you do 30 seconds divided by three. So then you will have 10 seconds. If you have three of them, you'll have 30 seconds divided by four, so 7.5. And when you have 10, you do divided by 11, and that gives you 2.73 seconds. Uh, you'll never have that. <laughs> when the fuck do you have 10 Genesis loop? Anyway. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this one is a great item in normal. Unfortunately, you won't ever feel the effect of it in uh, in glass. Because you, if you fall below 25% HP, you're dead. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but in normal, it's a really good item. And the 6,000 base damage is very, very, very good. And uh, it just falls here. Top of good. Halcyon Seed. Summon Aurelianite during the Teleporter event. It has 100% plus 50% per stack damage and 100% plus 100% per stack health of Aurelianite, by the way. <laughs> the damage is yours, but Aurelianite's HP is his. <laughs> so, it has 2,100 HP plus 630 per level. You know, he has a lot, a lot of HP. So, yeah. And even in glass, it still stays alive for a long time and his damage is really, really good. So, Aurelian Knight is uh, one of the best summons that you have. And I think it just falls around here. Uh, like this. Yep. Next up is Pearl. <laughs> the Pearl. Increase his maximum health by 10% plus 10% per stack. It's not that good of an item. <laughs> I don't know why everyone f screams about these items. The Pearl and the Uradian Pearl. But even Iranian Pearl is not that good. But anyway, Pearl. Yeah, good. 10% increase in HP. Yay. It just falls here. Iranian Pearl. 10% increase on every stat. But it's very hard to get. Is it that much of a good item? Fuck no. Fuck no. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. Why is Brainstalk so low? How are you ranking your lists? Like how... Oh. Of how uh, they are on the on their own or with items. So I'm thinking with items and I'm thinking with everyone that I can. But also, Brainstalks is low because I hate the screen tint. <laughs> it's basically just the screen tint. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it gives you the cooldowns and everything is good, but I hate the screen tint. <laughs> if the item didn't have the screen tint, uh, if I gave you the ranking without screen tint... Be here. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, Pearl uh, falls here. Iranian Pearl is a bit higher, of course. It's a great one, but it's not like amazing. Yeah, ten percent increase on your, all your stats. Good. Eh, here I guess. Mm, little disciple, fire tracking wisp for three hundred plus three hundred per stack damage. Fires every 1.6 seconds while sprinting. Fire race increases with movement speed. This is actually a pretty good one. 300% uh, plus 300% per stack damage is pretty nice. And I'm someone that is always of the train of thought that you should always sprint in the game while you're not doing anything. And while you're in Huntress, you always sprint. So yeah, even while firing your, your M2, you just sprint immediately right after. Just so that you always are sprinting. So, uh, this one just is a very good one. I feel like it's great. Just under that, though. Yeah. Myrdern. Uh, Myrdern. I mean, while in combat, the nearest one plus one per stack enemies to you within 13 meters, meters will be tethered to you, dealing 100% damage per second, applying tar, and healing you for 100% of the damage dealt. Not one of those situational items that are for melee characters, really, because 13 meters, you won't really stay in that if you're a ranged character normally. Uh, so yeah, it's another one of those melee ones that I'll just keep with the other two. Molten Perforator is basically uh, is basically a charge perforator, but a little worse. 
And the Magnum Bonds are actually way worse because they fall a bit everywhere and you cannot get them too far on people. They do deal fine damage, but it's worse than the Perforator as well. So this one will only be about here. Yeah, I'll keep Brainstalks here for the sake of it, you know. <laughs> yes, it's awful for me because of the, state of the screen tin. But other than that, of course, it's really good. Uh, Planula. Heal from incoming damage for 15... Plus 15%. So if you take damage after the damage, you will heal for 15. Uh, that was how it was supposed to go before. I don't know how it changed. I don't know if it changed. Yeah. Damage uh, uh, damage over time debuffs. Fall damage and damage from the void fields trigger the, the heal. Except one. <clears throat> after taking damage, it will not provide the holder from dying, even if the resultant healing would bring them above. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's except one thing, uh, the planula. <laughs> the planula doesn't heal one thing, and it is the new effect of uh, the void. You know, the void, uh, whatever the fuck it is. What's the name of it? <laughs> Wait a minute. I can find it normally. If I go to Ben's raincoat, I can find it. Void fog. There you go. It doesn't heal from that, unfortunately. Which is a bit of a, a shame. It would make the things very easy in the void fog. But yeah, Planula in itself is good. It's also what I call the Void Simplifier. Because, again, for the Void, having one of those makes it so that you won't die in the Void. I don't know, maybe now the Void actually is Void Fog. So maybe they changed it. I never went back to the Void since the DLC. So I can't tell you. I'm going to base myself on the fact that the Void is still Void and not Void Fog. <laughs> so for me, just for that fact alone, this one goes here. Bottom of great. Uh, this one now. Oh, shit. Yeah, the Queen's Gland. Summon a Beetle Guard every 30 seconds. Bonus 30 free, uh, with a bonus 300% damage and 100% health. Can have up to 1 plus 1 guards at a time. It deals good damage in the early game, but falls off very quickly because it will never stay alive any longer. So, this one falls under the category with the other two. And it's the one at the top, though. There you go. So I will talk about Titanic Neural and then Shatter Spleen. Titanic Neural, increase maximum health by 40 plus 40 per stack and base health regen by 1.6 plus 1.6 uh, plus 1.63 per second. This one, at the top of good. I think it's one of the best, uh, best central, you know, it's one of the best medium items that you can get. Just the 40 HP is good and the 1.6 health regen makes it better than all of these in my mind. Also better than the Cautious Slug, of course. Because this one stays forever, the health regen. And now let's talk about Shatter Spleen. <laughs> okay, 5% crit chance. Critical strikes. Bleed enemies for 240% base damage. The same bleed as the tri-tip dagger. However, bleeding enemies explode on death for 400% plus 400% per stack damage. Plus an additional 15% plus 15% per stack on their maximum health. Which is... Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most bullshit item ever. This item goes here. It is number one, and it should be number one for everyone. <laughs> Seriously, this item is bullshit. The fact that it just doesn't only deal 400% plus 400%. If you have two, you deal 800% damage from the with an explosion, you know? And then an additional 30% if you have two... Of their max health? You kill everything. This is just an instant one-shot. Even on one, it's an instant one-shot if you have a bleed on them. <laughs> so it's an amazing item. The most amazing item. Alright, we have three more categories to do. I've been at this for an hour and a half, actually. <laughs> yeah, an hour and 40 minutes. Okay, we have the blue items. We have the equipment items. And we have the corrupted items. So, let's go for the lunar ones. Oh boy. So, Beads of Fealty. Uh, I mean, it's fine if you want to go for it. <laughs> this one is just going to be here, right? It's a good one. I don't even know why I kept this one, to be honest, in the thing. But, <laughs> I mean, if you want to go for the boss, go for it. <laughs> Whatever. But I prefer going for uh, Mithrix myself. It does give more, normally, uh, lunar coins, right? Doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Hey, still, doesn't matter. If you want to go for it, go for it. Go for the guys, get the extra 10 Lunar Coins. That's good. 
<laughs> do your thing. Next, Corpse Bloom. Uh, actually, no. Uh, the, the Brittle Crown. 30% chance on hit to gain 2 plus 2 per stack gold scales over time. So you'd get 1 tenth to 1 fifteenth of a chest thanks to the Brittle Crown effect. But of course, you would lose gold on taking damage equal to 100% of the maximum health percentage you lost. Which sucks hard. <laughs> it does. So basically, don't get hit. But the thing is, that takes into account fall damage. Fall damage. Okay, so yeah, this one is bad. Just because it doesn't even have a good good thing for it. Going for it. You know, the effect is not that good even. So, it's worse than a bottle of chaos. It's worse than a leptin daisy. Ah, it's even awful. I'm gonna get it here. Course Bloom. Heal 100% plus 100 per stack more, but all healing is applied over time. And you can only heal for a maximum of 10% minus 50% per stack of your health per second. Which means that uh, this is bad. <laughs> Seriously, you cannot have a boom 100% heal like that. Sometimes it happens, you know? <laughs> Corpse Bloom is completely uh, counterintuitive with how the game is played, in my opinion. But this one just goes here. Defiant Gouge. Again, if you want to go for it, go for it. <laughs> Using a shrine summons enemies nearby, scales over time, so the enemies do get stronger and everything. Fine. Fine. I mean, I don't, I don't care about it. It goes here. <laughs> uh, next, we have the Effigy of Grief, I think. Yep. All characters within are slowed by 50% and have their armor reduced by 20. You can place up to 5. Is this good? Eh. <laughs> Not really. I don't like it. Armor reduced by 20 doesn't even do that much. And it's just inconvenient whenever you're placing it down. So, it's a bad one. Feels like it's worse than Cautious Slug as well. Not worse than Bottle Chaos, because Bottle Chaos is too, uh, too unpredictable. Next up, we have a new one in Egocentrism. Egocentrism. Every three minus 50% per stack second, gain an orbiting orb that detonates on impact for 360% damage up to a maximum of three bombs, plus one per stack. However, every 60 seconds, a random item is converted into this item. This means that if you have 20 items, let's say, and you get this item, in 20 minutes, you will only have this item. And you don't know which item will be converted as well. You can lose items that are essential to your build, like that. However, I do feel like it has at least some merit, especially for melee characters. So, it goes here. <laughs> it goes here. There we go. Next up is Essence of Heresy. I will get all four heresy skills at the same time. Uh, where's the fourth? Here. All right, Essence of Heresy is the first. Replace your special skill with Ruin. Dealing damage adds a stack of Ruin for 10 plus 10%, 10 per stack second. Which kind of sucks. Uh, well, I mean, it's fine. <clears throat> Activating this skill detonates all ruin stacks but at unlimited range, dealing 300% damage plus 120% damage per stack of ruin. So basically, all damage adds a stack of ruin, and then you detonate it, dealing a good amount of damage. But of course, the thing is, the more you have of this effect, uh, the worse it feels because it, uh, it recharges after 16 seconds if you have two of them, even just two. So it kind of sucks. I don't like this one too much. And again, it's for some characters only, because some characters might have a merit in changing their special skill with that one, you know? So, boom. And it's the same thing for all the heresy items. It's good for some characters who have a dependence on changing one of their skills. So basically, Hooks of Heresy replaces the secondary skill with Slicing Maelstrom. Yeah, 875% damage per second. Two enemies exploding after three seconds to deal 700% damage and root enemies for 3 plus 3 per stack seconds. Recharges after 5 plus 5 per stack stack seconds. Once again. Just, it's good for some people. The third, Strides of Heresy. 
Shadow Fade. If you want to have at least a small dash that heals you, get that one, dude. And this one doesn't actually have that bad of an effect as well. Like, you become intangible. You get 30% move speed. The only thing bad about it is that you replace your utility skill. But for some people, that might be a good thing. The one I'm really thinking of is Artificer, <laughs> actually. Or Void Fiend. Void Fiend, you might want to change it, too. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, this one, again, has some merit for some people. Visions of Heresy. This one is the one that I feel has the least amount of merit. <laughs> because you're a primary skill. Again, a bit for everyone. Except Artificer. Fire Flurry of Tracking Shards that detonate after a delay, dealing 120% base damage, holds up to 12 charges plus 12 per stack that reload after 2 seconds plus 2 seconds per stack. So, this one goes at the bottom of them, but it's still one that you can use. Next up, Eulogy Zero. Items, uh, items, items have a 5% chance plus 5% per stack to become a Lunar item instead. So, I don't know about that one. <laughs> it is a gamble. It is a gamble because you have a few blue items that are actually good. I'll talk about them in a bit, about the ones that you can use. But you don't have as many as you would want to really warrant this item being good, I feel. So it will be at the top of bad, but a low, a very high top of bad, okay? <clears throat> Focused Convergence. Teleporters charge 30% plus 30% per stack faster, but the size of the teleporter zone is 50% minus 50% per stack smaller. This item is good. Focus Convergence makes this game go faster, and it makes it a bit more compact and challenging. Uh, with one. Uh, with three, it's a bit of a bore, and it's just too much, man. But, yeah, with one, it's pretty good. I get this one uh, here, I think, between these two. Mm, yeah. Actually, I think I should also do this. Yeah. All right. Next. Gesture of the Drowned. Reduce the equipment cooldown by 50% plus 15% per stack, but forces your equipment to activate whenever it is off cooldown. This item is actually pretty great. It has a lot of usage, and with uh, good equipments, you can actually really use it effectively and have a good time. So I think that this one is actually in great. Where in grade, though? Uh, I think it just with this one, but just better than this. With than the Soulbank Catalyst. Yeah. Glowing Meteorite. Uh, let me just go check exactly the numbers of the Glowing Meteorite. So, Rain Meteors from the Sky. Damaging all characters from 600% damage per blast last 20 seconds. I just think that this item is fun. <laughs> Having to dodge all the, the Meteorites and everything. I think this item is fun. <laughs> I'll just get it here. Middle of good. You know, if you want to have a bit of fun... Do that. <laughs> so, uh, then, we have the Hellfire Tincture that I already talked about for a bit. Ignites all characters within 15 meters for 12 seconds. Deal 5% of your maximum health per second as burning, uh, as damage. The burn is 0.5, sec 0 .5 times stronger on yourself, 0.25 per times stronger on allies, and 24 times on enemies. So, I mean, it does a lot of damage on enemies, but I think that it has a combo now with Ben's Raincoat. That it does have a combo with that item. So, it actually is not bad anymore. If you have Ben's Raincoat, it's actually good for some characters, right? So, it goes here. It's good for some characters. That's what I feel. Again, the ones that want to stay close to enemies and everything. Because one tick of burn is just actually pretty good as damage, you know? <clears throat> then, next, we have the Light Flux Pauldron, I think the name is. Yep, Light Flux Pauldron. Decrease the skill cooldown by 50% plus 50% per stack, but decrease attack speed by 50% plus 50% per stack. This item is really good. <clears throat> really. I feel like it's really good. Yes, decrease attack speed. It's full attack speed decrease, by the way, I think. Because uh, I think it's actually uh, after the all the attack speed is determined. Okay, it doesn't have a formula yet, unfortunately. So I can't actually know if that's the case. But I think it is decrease the full attack speed that you have. So basically, if you have 350% attack speed, let's say, you would only have 175%. So, okay. But still, 
skill cooldowns by 50%? This is twice what Alien Head gives. It is a gamble. I don't say that it isn't. It is a gamble. But I do think that it actually is warranted to take this item. And I will give it, as all the other gamble items, I'll give it another good one. There you go. Mercurial, Mercurial Rackus creates a ward of power in a random location nearby that buffs both enemies and allies within 16 meters, plus 50% per stack, causing them to deal plus 50% damage. Another gamble item. Uh, so this one goes here again. And then we have to talk about the Stone Flux Pauldron, which is the second pauldron. Increase max health by 100% plus 100% stack, but reduce movement speed by 50% plus 50% per stack. Same thing, although this one I think is much stronger. This one I think is much stronger. Movement speed is very easy to come by. You have two white items that give you movement speed. <laughs> so I think movement speed is very easy to come by. You have also a lot of greens that give you movement speed. So... For me, this one actually is not good. It's great. It will be over Deathmark even. Soldier Syringe even. Yeah. Even over, over these two. Yeah, because it's also 100% extra, extra HP. So, yeah, it's here. It's around the top of great. Next is Purity. Purity is only conditional. It's only fine if you have a 57 Leaf Clover. So if you have the item that neutralizes it, then it's fine. Because if you just take into account these two together, you just take two seconds cooldown off on all your skills. On things that have low cooldowns on skills, this is great. What I'm thinking is basically Huntress, Heart Artificer, which is very reliant on cooldowns, uh, Mercenary, uh, Commando, Bandit. Railgunner doesn't work for that, but Bandit. Uh, another one that I want to talk about. Acrid, which I actually really like with the jump for that. And so, yeah. I do think it's warranted to take that one. Of course, it's not good. In itself, it's not good. But another gamble item. That's just what it is. It's another gamble item. It is worse than the fine gouge or all of these, so it's the lowest one of the gamble items. But there you go. It is still a gamble item. Shave the glass, lose 50% of your HP, but deal 100% extra damage. My thoughts on this item is this. I love double-edged swords, and I love increasing the difficulty by reducing my max HP. The best thing now is that with this, you just counter it with the Stone Flux Pauldron. Yes, you lose movement speed, but you got more damage, and, more and you still have the same amount of health. Yeah, you do lose movement speed, but it, it's countered, you know? It's countered by the Stone, Stone Flux Pauldron. Kind of. <laughs> Not at all, all countered, but a good amount is countered. Next. Uh, I'm going to do Transcendence first. So Transcendence gives you, converts all your health but one into regenerating shields. But, and you also get 50% of your uh, max HP plus 25 per stack. Another gamble item, but it's better than uh, Beats of Fealty. Yeah, there you go. And now we have the combo, Spinal Tonic. Drink the tonic, gaining a boost for 20 seconds, increases damage by 100%, increases attack speed by 70%, increases armor by 20, increases max health by 50%, increases passive healing reg regen by 300%, increases movement speed by 30%, but of course you have that 20% chance to gain a tough tonic affliction, reducing all of your stats by 5%, minus 5% per stack. This item works with a combo of Gesture of the Drown and 3 Fuel Cell, and it will always be activated. Now, it is another one of those items that has a tint, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> it's a blue tint. I think it's a bit more subtle, <laughs> so I prefer it slightly. But this one is not a gamble item. It's better. It's better than a gamble item. It's better than Brainstalks, that's for sure. It's better than all of these. Because all, for all the stats that it gives, it's actually very good, you know? And if you actually get the Gesture of the Drown and the free Fuel Cell, which is not the hardest thing to do, it is very easily usable. And, uh, yeah, it goes here, I think. I think it goes here. 
All right, we only have two types of items left. Oh boy. So, let's do the equipments. Blast shower sucks. Sucks completely. You want to know why now? You have Ben's raincoat as well. So why would you? <laughs> you have Ben's raincoat. You don't need this item anymore in the game. <laughs> in the game. Okay. So, yeah. This one's just awful. I'll just go here. <clears throat> Disposable missile launcher. I will have one word to say. ICBM. This is this is one word, you know, in itself. Pocket ICBM phone to do two words. But yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Thanks to the pocket ICBM, this item has become the second best used item in the game. The first one, of course, still being the royal capacitor. I won't even I won't even just sugarcoat it. This one is there, right here. There you go. It's still the best one. So I won't even sugarcoat it. Next up, but yeah, it's, the, the disposable missile launcher is fucking amazing. It's amazing. With the pocket ICBM, you don't fire 12 rockets. No, you fire 36. <laughs> so yeah, it's fucking massive. You kill anything with this. Even Mithrix. It's a joke. But almost. Almost. Because they deal 300% damage. So it's a good amount. But anyway, eccentric vase. Create a quantum tunnel for up to one uh, one thousand meter in length. This is for the lazy people. Uh, but this one is a bad one still. Uh, it goes over these two, I guess. Nah, it goes under these two. Next, executive card. So whenever you make a gold purchase, get ten percent of the spent gold back. If you purchase, if the purchase is a multi-shop terminal. The other terminals will remain open, and just for that fact alone, this thing is actually pretty good. Early game, it actually is pretty good. So I will get it above all the lunar items. There you go. Next up is Foreign Fruit. Instantly heal for 50% of your max health. I'll have one word. Simulacrum. Yeah. <laughs> if you're playing at two people in Simulacrum, you can do a thing that is a death abuse. So basically, if someone wants an item, but it's too far and you won't be able to come back, you just st you just have one person stay inside of the zone after everything is done, of course. You just let one people stay inside of the zone, and you go take it. Even if you die, you can still go to the other zone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And so yeah, this is why Simulacrum, I think it's much better on two people. It's much funnier. You can also really screw with people. I love that. <laughs> but why am I talking about foreign fruit in Simulacrum? Because of the fact that getting a 50% max health heal whenever you are under the fog is pretty good for surviving extra an extra bit of time under the fog. So I think this item is also warranted to have a good use. Uh, it's under these, though. Under Ankuana. Like here. Yeah. Nah, here. Just above the Leandries. I know it's not Leandries, but I'm, I'm a league boy. I play league. Uh, <laughs> uh, whoops. I fucked up something, my bad. There we go. Okay. So, uh, next we have the Forgive Me Please. Throw a cursed doll that, uh, that triggers on any on-kill effects you have every one second for eight seconds. This is fine. It's fine. <clears throat> but if you don't have any on-kill uh, effects, it's not that good. But of course, we're talking as if we have those effects. So if you have Shatter Spleen, uh, Will-O-Wisp, Gasoline, all of those, these three, those are pretty good to have for this. So of course, this one has some usage. I think it's good. It's pretty good. Uh, it's under all of these. It's over this, though. Gnarled Wood Sprite. Gain a Wood Sprite follower that heals for 1.5% of your max health per second. Can be sent to an ally to heal them for 10% of their max health. This is not enough of a heal, by the way, to actually go against the uh, Simulacrum. The Void Fog. Not the Simulacrum. The Void Fog. The 10% of the max health is okay, but unfortunately it's not going to be enough to keep you alive long in the, 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 the Void Fog. So, it's not actually that great. So, yeah, there you go. But what this means is that the normal wood sprite is worse than foreign fruit. It's bottom of good. I'll let it go here. Nah, here. 
Stun Grenade is still the bottom of good, but this one is there. Gubu Jr. Spawn a gummy clone that has 200% damage and 200% health. Expires in 30 seconds. Now, the one thing I liked about this item was that I thought that it would be... Uh, was that I thought that it would be a Shattering Mirror. If you don't know what that is, Shattering Mirror was an item in Risk of Rain 1 that really, really was the best use item in the game. It uh, basically just doubled your power if you use, uh, uh, doubled your power. It doubled your power for like eight seconds or something like that. And then you had another item that could triple, get that to triple your power. So it's amazing. It was amazing before. And yeah. But on this one, on the 3D space and everything, they prefer to go with an AI that goes around and do, does stuff. Not that great. <laughs> it's not that great. Uh, but I think I'll just do for some characters. Yeah, okay. Gorag's Opus. All allies enter a frenzy for 7 seconds. All allies. Uh -huh. Increases movement speed by 50% and attack speed by 100. So if you think about it in a multiplayer sense, someone should have this item on himself, you know. If you find it, keep it in your, in your party. That should be good. And yeah. Movement speed by 50%, attack speed by 100. It's better uh, than the uh, the Berserker's Pauldron, actually. So I'll warrant that and get it just above the Berserker's Pauldron. Jade Elephant, 500 armor for 5 seconds. This is good for going against bursts because 500 armor is 83.33% damage reduction. So this is good for going against bursts. I'll actually get it above the Aegis, but below the Hal Hal Halcyon Seed. Milky Chrysalis. Sucks. I don't like the Milky Chrysalis. Sprout wings and fly for 15 seconds. Gain 20% movement speed for the duration. I think it's bad. And I will get it at the top of Awful, but below the Brittle Crown. Molotov, 6-pack. Throw 6 Molotov cocktails that ignite enemies for 500% base damage. Each Molotov leaves a burning area for 200% damage per second. If you hit it on an enemy... This is really strong. And if you power, if you get it with the ignition tank, this is massive. The damage that you deal from that is massive. So, I'll get it just above the ignition tank. Ocular HUD. Actually, better than before. For a simple reason that is going to come soon. But this one is actually going to be in great. I'll get it above these two. So, Ocular HUD gives you 100% crit chance for 8 seconds. So, this one goes here. Above the Brain Stalks, of course. Prion Accumulator. Fires Prion Tendrils, zapping enemies within 35 meters for up to 600% damage per second. On contact, detonates in an enormous 20 meter explosion for 4000% damage. Of course. This guy is... Th this item is one of the best used items in the game, but it is top 3, not more than that. At best, top 3 as well. I don't even know if it's top 3 anymore. I prefer Recycler and Saw Mirroring myself, but okay. So, actually, it's going to be in great. It's not going to be higher than that. It's going to be with these two. Higher than these two, because it, on its own, it's still good. So, there you go. For some reason, I opened Photoshop. That's my fault. <laughs> Whoops. Uh... Next up, we have the prim Primordial Cube. Fire is a black hole that draws enemy within 30 meters into its center. I do not like this item. I don't. Especially not now with the Singularity Band being in the game. I think it's bad. It's better than all of these, sure. Better than Wake of Vulture 2. Where's an eulogy? Where's an eulogy 0? Radar Scanner is just uh, scanning the area. So it's a neutral item. It's a completely neutral item. So it's going to be in the middle of good. Whatever. Recycler is one of my favorite items. Just for the fact that the reroll of the item is really good. So transforming an item or equipment into a different one can only be converted into the same tier one time. But I really like this item. I really do. Just because it gives you the chance to fire, to change a bad item into, a ba into another good one. Sometimes it does change it into a bad one. But how do you know? You can't. Uh, it's better than the burn effects. No, it's worse than the burn effects. It's... Here. Next up, Remote Caffeinator. I never got it in the game myself, okay? But from what I can see from it, 
Request an Eclipse Zero vending machine from the UES Safe Travels. Delivery guaranteed in 5 seconds, dealing 2000% damage. Heal up to 3 targets for 25% of the max health. So what I'm getting from this is that it's a small heal that you won't actually that won't actually matter. The 2000% damage is good, but know what? You know what? Rotal capacitor heal hits for 3000. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> nah, seriously. Uh, I don't think this one is a good item. I don't. I think it's just this, but worse. There you go. Summerang. Throw three large saw blades that slice through enemies for three times 400% damage. Also, these an additional three times 100% damage per second while bleeding enemies. Can strike enemies again on the way back for the same amount of damage. Which is why this item deals a shit ton of damage and is actually really, really good. It is better than Recycler. Better than all of these as well. I think it's here. It's at the top of Amazing. Yep. Next up, we have the Supermassive Leech. Heal for 20% of the damage you deal. It's just lifesteal. And it's bad lifesteal as well. <laughs> Seriously, it's bad lifesteal. So. Here. <laughs> nah, here. But you shouldn't use it. You shouldn't ever get it. The backup called Four Strike Drones to fight with you. Well, for you. Uh, so, I mean, this one. I think it's just uh, another one of those weird ones that are pretty inoffensive. It goes like here, I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah, it can be good with this. Actually, now I think about it, with the parts. So, yeah. The Crowdfunder fires a, a continuous barrage that deals 100% damage per bullet. Costs $1 per bullet, but cost increases over time. Uh, I mean, early game, this actually deals a good amount of damage. And late game, well, it uses a lot of money. <laughs> so, not fun. But early game is pretty good. It's another one of those inoffensive ones that are pretty fine. I'll get it with the forgive me now. Forgive me, please. Next up, Trophy hu trophy Hunter's Tricorn. I will think about it without the bugs, okay? With it working correctly. So, execute any enemy capable of spawning a unique reward, and it will drop that item. Equipment is consumed on use. And so, I do think that this is pretty fine. Like, actually, executing an enemy early game like this can be really good. Really, really nice. And getting, like... Uh, the special reward with the Shatter Spleen. Me likey. But you need to have the item in the right position to get it. So, it's a bit uh, conditional. But I do think it's good conditional. I think it's the right, uh, right, th uh, right way to think about this. So, I will get it in great. Below the Iridian Pearl. Sure. That feels okay. Below the Iridian Pearl. Next up, and lastly, <clears throat> Volcanic Egg. Volcanic Egg. So, uh, turn into a Draconic Fireball for 5 seconds, dealing 500% damage on impact, detonates at the end for an extra 800% damage. I like the movement you have on it. It's fine. <laughs> I'll just, uh... I think it's worse than these. Uh, here. Nah, nah, here. Above these. So, there you go. Now we have the aspects to do. The elite equipments. So, we have her binding embrace, her, his reassurance, Ifrit's distinction, and Kuhana's retort, shared design, silence between two strikes, and spectral circlet. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, eight. We have eight of them now, what? That's not right. We have seven of them. <laughs> we have seven of them. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, okay. So this one is the um, Earth Aspect Mending Elite. All of these are going to be for Awful. Because why would you get these over the other ones? This is our Binding Embrace. So this is the only... No, actually, our Binding Embrace is the one I want to still keep here. There you go. All of these go here. Without any particular order. Because they all are the same and they all suck. Except for Silence Between Two Strikes and Aphrodite's Extinction. If your extinction is bad, but it's not the worst thing. I get it like here. And then the silence between two strikes, which is the aspect of lightning, is actually better than that. And it's gonna be better than this. Here you go. 
And lastly, we have one last type of item to do, which leaves us with 14 items, one last row. First up, Benthic Bloom. Upgrades 3 plus, plus 3 per stack random items to, uh, to items of the next higher rarity at the start of each stage, but corrupts all 57 Leaf Clovers. And this is why this item falls short. Because it corrupts this item. The second best item in the game, in my opinion. So, it actually falls short. It falls short. I think that this one is top of bad. Top of bad. Just because of the fact that it takes off your uh, 57 leaf clovers. If you have a 57 leaf clover, why would you want that? If you want a 57 leaf clover, why would you want that? Anyway, yeah. Because 57 leaf clover's effect is way too good. Just to warn having some reds that are coming to you. Just farm. Get them. That's fine. Encrusted key. A hidden cache containing an item. 60%, 30%, 10%. So 60% white, 30% green, and 10% red. It will appear in a random location on each stage. Opening the cache consumes this item. And it can corrupts all the rusted keys. So Rusted Key is right here, and I do think that this is basically an item that is close to what this one is. For a simple reason, you choose the item between three. This is why. So it's the worst of the choose item category, but it is still a choose item category, and I think it's, it's warranted to actually change your Rusted Keys once the bug is out. For now, though... Of course, Rusted Key is godlike number one because of a bug. So let's not count that, okay? If you think without the bug, Encrusted Key, power level-wise, it's close to what the Rusted Key is. Close. It's worse slightly. Next, Lost Sears Lenses. This is why Ocular HUD isn't great. This is the reason why. Because... Lost Sears, <clears throat> Lost Sears Lenses. Your attacks have a 0.5% plus 0.5% per stack chance to instantly kill a non-boss enemy. This stacks linear. Linear, okay? This is massive. That it stacks linear is massive. Because I was able to kill a lot of bosses in Simulacrum thanks to the Lost Sears Lenses. A lot of them. And yeah, it, it is warranted to change your lens maker glasses. It's weird, right? To actually say that. However, here's my, my thought on that. You can do this while getting the ocular HUD. Yeah. While getting the ocular HUD, you can change that. So, and you would still have a 100% chance. And then if you get a few gestures of the drowned and uh, some fuel cells, you'd have the ocular HUD 100% up, right? So you'd still have 100% of uh, your stri crit, crit strike chance while also having that chance to instantly kill a non-boss enemy. Of course, that is a weird combo that doesn't happen a lot or anything like that. But I think it's warranted to look at it. So lost your sense lenses. Actually, it's not godlike. It's not amazing, but it's great. At least great. But it is a combo that is close to being impossible to do, but it is doable. <laughs> it is easily doable. It's actually easily doable, but hey, you need the right circumstances. Next up, Lysate Cell. Add plus one, plus one per stack charge of your special skill. Reduces special skill cooldown by 33% without stack down. Corrupts all fuel cells. So this means that instead of having some equipment cooldown, instead you have some special skill, extra special skill with some cooldown reduction as well. This made my day on Mercenary. <laughs> it really made my day on Mercenary. I was able to finish the game thanks to that item. I, I don't kid, I would finish the game thanks to that item, and that item only. I could not get hit, and it was crazy good. 
So, it is warranted to take that item. I actually like taking that item. Uh, it's for some characters, though. It is for some characters. But I think it is, like, the second best for some characters. Or actually, under these. Sure, under these. But there you go. Next up, Needle Tick. 10% plus 10% per stack chance to collapse an enemy for 400% base damage. Corrupts all tri-tip daggers. So, by the way, corrupts means that you change all of these items that you already have in you. Or the ones that are going to come into these items instead of the ones that you that you would normally get. So, uh, this one takes off the tri-tip daggers. But I think that the collapse effect is not as strong as the bleed. Which would mean that tri-tip dagger is amazing. This one isn't good. Yikes. Yeah, I know, right? That's pretty bad. Because you have to think that you are taking away that effect as well of the bleed. Of course, you could get it. Still, you could still have another bleed with this, with the Shadow Spleen, which is why Shadow Spleen is always first. And I do think it's like here. Yeah. Next up, newly hatched Zoea, which is not obtainable in the game really right now, thanks to a bug. I never got it myself, but it is obtainable in one way only, but I never tried it myself. Every 60, minus 50% per stack seconds, gain a random void ally. Can have up to one, plus one per stack ally at a time. Corrupts all yellow items. All yellow items. All yellow items. Shadow Spleen is corrupted. No, thank you. <laughs> Seriously, though, this one is awful. This one is awful, not just for that, but just because, I mean, yay, get another uh, get another ally. That will do a lot for you. Woo, don't you love allies? I hate allies. Anyway, yeah, there you go. This one just goes here. Uh, Plasma Shrimp. Gain a shield equal to 10% of your max health. While you have a shield, hitting an enemy, an enemy fires a missile that deals 40% plus 40% per stack total damage. Corrupts all ATG missile and K1. By the way, those missiles actually also have the effect from pocket ICBM. Mm-hmm. They do. <laughs> I did the test normally. They do, right? I, I never really looked at the thing, but they, I, I think they do. They have a proc coefficient of 0.2 instead of 1 for missile for the HTG missile. Sure. It's not that much of a problem, though. Not in my mind. Because these don't have a chance. They always attack whenever you have a shield. Which is why this item is godlike. <laughs> I don't think it's actually that bad compared to the HTG missile. I think... It's like here? And I think this is also a thing. That the Brilliant Behemoth is better than the Missile. Ah. Mm. I'll do this and this also at the bottom. Because I don't like this here. But yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Next. Pluripotent Larva. Upon death, this item will be consumed. And you will return to life with 3 seconds of invulnerability. And all of your items that can be corrupted will be. Corrupts all Dio's best friends. Now, I think this is basically another one of this. You just get it with this one. However, it is better because I prefer a lot of the void items compared to their normal counterparts. I actually do. So that's why I warn this one being here. Next up, po Polyloot. 25% chance to fire lightning for 60% total damage up to three times. Corrupts all ukuleles. Same thing. I think this one is better than ukulele. <laughs> because 25% chance is still the same amount of chance. Lightning for 60% total damage for a single enemy. Yikes, that hurts. That hurts. And it stacks thrice. And then three more times after that. So it's like that. Next up, though, we have a different one. We have a different one. We have safer spaces. Blocks incoming damage once. Recharges after 15 seconds minus 10% per stack. Corrupts all tougher times. 
Now, if you want just the numbers, this means that you will need 26 before getting to one second cooldown for the uh, sacred spaces. Uh, which means that you would block an attack every second. <laughs> which is nice, but wouldn't it be better to have tougher times at that point if you have 26 of safer spaces? Wouldn't it be better to, to take away 90% of attacks? Well, not 90, but 60% of your attacks or 75% of your attacks. I prefer that chance more than the regeneration from the safer spaces. I can see that this item could be very good, okay? Which is why it's still going to be amazing. It's gonna be here. Yeah. We have four more left. Singularity Band. Hits that deal more than 400% damage also fire a black hole that draws enemies within 15 meters into its center. Last 5 seconds before collapsing, dealing 100% plus 100% per stack total damage. Now, the damage is very low that it deals. I, I will say it's very low. 100% total damage, very low. However, the 5 seconds of the, of the void tunnel that gets them all together, of the void black hole, I guess I should say, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and um, I don't think it's better than Runald, but it's better than Kiaro. So, what I'll do is give this one this, this state right here. So better than Kiaro, but way worse than, than Runald. Next up, Tentabobble. 5% chance plus 5% per stack on hit to root enemies for one second plus one second per stack. It is much better than Chronobobble. <laughs> this one is much better than Chrono Bubble. Okay? Like, Chrono Bubble is here. It's in bad. This one is in good. This one is in good. I mean, a root is a better effect than a slow, especially 60%. So, it goes here. I think. No, no, it doesn't. It goes here. Under the needle tick, slightly. And next, we have two items that I really like Void Scent Flame. Upon hitting an enemy at full health, spawn a lava pillar in a 12 meter plus 2.4 meter per stack radius for 350% plus 280 per stack base damage. This damage is higher than the Will O' Wisp, but it corrupts all the Will O' Wisp. I still think it's better. I think this item is better than the Will O' Wisp. The Will O' the Wisp. I think it's the quintessential best amazing item in here. There you go. And Weeping Fungus heals for 2% plus 2% per stack of your health every second while sprinting. Corrupts all bustling fungi. This item goes right here for some characters. All right. Let me check exactly all the items one by one just to make sure that I got everything that I wanted really in the right place. The top three set. I won't move it. I won't move it. Top three is going to be this for always. So then you have the Brilliant Behemoth, the Royal Capacitor, Plasma Shrimp, Huffle Feather, Disposable Missile Launcher, Pocket ICBM, Lensmaker Glasses, Laser Scope, Runal Band, uh, Tougher Times, Shaved Glass, Voids and Flame, Tray Tip Dagger. Yeah, no, no. Oh, okay, let me just, hmm. This one might be better than this. Yeah, okay. I'm taking this down a bit. It's worse than these two. Yeah, that's like that. It's like that. It's slightly worse than these. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of not sure about my placement of Delicate Watch, though. Maybe I should have gotten it, like, here. Yeah, yeah, I should have gotten it, like, here. So Delicate Watch now is there. <coughs> Next. Symbiotic Scorpion. No, it's good where it is. Because the effect is not that amazing, let's be honest. Great. Mm, yeah, no, that makes sense. Oh, Seer, yeah. 
Death mark feels a bit high. Should be like here. Yeah. No, here. There we go. Like this. And then. No, that's fine. Titanic Neural. Okay, sure can. I'm just going through them all now. I want to make sure that I'm not really making any big mistakes in this ranking. This one might be a mistake. Feels high. It feels high. Because I really don't like the jump height increase. It's too high. The jump height is too high of an increase. And you stay in the air too long and you just stagnate there. I'll go like this instead. Yeah. Middle of good. Instead of top to m top middle, you know. All right. Mhm. Mm I think this one is weird. Uh, not this one. This one is weird as I placed it. Because I feel like it's much better than that. <clears throat> it's better than these. I'll go like that. And I like this, even. Yeah. I'll go like this. Next up, so bad... Yeah, that one counts. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, but this one is a gamble. Once again, it's another one of those gamble items like I talked about. So maybe you should just be like these. All of these. Not low. Maybe more of uh, across the high points of them. Or middle. Nah, high point. There you go, like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm good with this now. I'm feeling good with it. I'm feeling good with this, so if you want to have it full, like... There you go, this is go so godlike to... There you go. I'm giving it to you in full if I can. <laughs> I think you can see all the items still, so... There you go. That's my ranking. Right there. That's my ranking. <laughs> nah, seriously, I, I, I think that's just it, right? I think this is the fine ranking. Again, if I could take down the brain stocks, I would. But I, if I take off the, my thoughts about the um, the screen tint, it's actually a fine item. It's great. Okay, <laughs> reducing all your skill cooldowns is pretty good. So yeah, all right. Well, with that being said. Uh, I'm going to be done with the stream and I'm going to be done with this video as well at the same time. So on YouTube, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, tier list and I will see you for the next video tomorrow. Bye.